to do that. So put this back to what it was. Okay. Um, color animation and the particle animator. Let's say we set it to red, and then we'll go purple. Why not? Go blue, green, and yellow. Yeah, that's yeah, close enough. The yellow. Now if we look down at the particles. There are all these fancy little colors, and they smoothly transition between red, purple, blue, green, and yellow. If we uncheck this, they will spawn white. It's as simple as that. If it doesn't animate color, you will just get the default color that the particle has. If it does, oh, look, you can change stuff. Alright. So, the, uh, oh, I close that up. The world rotation axis is basically, uh, this is completely optional. If you don't change it, it won't do anything. Uh, it's just an optional, basically, world space axis that these particles will rotate around and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, the local is pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, just within local space. Um, size grow. If we increase this to one, you see how these things start growing. We have a little bit. The the way the particle effect looks is completely different just because of this simple little thing. We go like five. And now we just got some weird multicolored clump. Uh, so yeah. So we got this now. Uh, random force. It's kind of like uh, random velocity, except with random velocity, you get these particles moving in a constant direction at a constant, like at a constant speed. Random force, it's literally just a random force uh, applied to these objects. So their movement is not constant. The whatever direction they're going just changes the entire time. Uh, it's pr pretty cool for some smoke or some sparks, stuff like that. And force is like random force, except just in one direction. Very controlled. Um, damping. <clears throat> Let's set a velocity to, say, 2. So we have these particles here moving at a constant velocity. And damping is set to 1. Let's say we go to point 1. They start out at their normal speed, but then they slow down once they get to a certain point. And if we set this to 2, they start out at their normal speed and then accelerate. Uh, don't set this to negative because you'll get a little error down here. But yeah, that's basically it. And auto destruct is uh, basically there so that if you have this at one shot, uh, once all the particles have disappeared, the actual game object itself gets destroyed. So it, there's no chance of it happening again. It's just it's completely gone. All right, so we did the emitter and the animator. So now here's the render. I usually uncheck these because they don't make a difference at all. Um, let's say we want to change the particle effect. These are the default ones we get uh, when we import the particle package. So let's make snowflakes. Just little weird colored snowflakes. Hmm. Alright. Um, if we... This is the mode that we can choose our particles to basically render in. Uh, sorted billboard. I honestly... Uh, I don't think it makes much of a difference. Um, if there is, I really don't know. I don't remember. Um, stretched. Oh, nothing here. Maybe I need to turn off the uh, one shot. No? What's going on here? That's never happened before. 
I actually literally don't know why the particles just decided to uh, not work anymore. That's actually really weird. That works. Billboard works, but stretch doesn't. Huh. Alright, I'll switch back to default. Maybe it's just some weird thing going on with... No? What in the world? Huh. Because that was exactly... Okay, basically, if stretched had worked, uh, the length scale uh, will change, basically, it will distort the texture. And velocity scale will distort the texture depending on how fast it's moving. So if we change the uh, uh, the damping to, say, 1, or actually, no, we'll go 2. Um, so let's see here. World velocity, sure, we'll go 1. So these particles will are moving in this direction and they are also damped so that they accelerate. If stretch, oh, now, okay, now stretch works, whatever. Um, see what it's doing here? It's just stretching these particles out because we have our length scale set to 2. If we go to 1, normal, let's go 0.5, it's half. So let's just go with 1. And velocity scale? If we increase this to 1, oh wow, let's stretch out a bit more than I thought it was going to. Um, yeah, we'll go with this. See how it actually increases the length of the object depending on its uh, speed. So if it increases to 5. See how these things actually get quite a bit longer as it goes out here? Yeah, that's basically what velocity scale is. Max particle size doesn't seem to do much of anything. Oh, excuse me. Um, all right. And UV animation. Let's say you have a sprite sheet and you want it to play as a particle effect. You can do that with UV animation. Uh, you have to tell how many tiles in the X direction there are and how many tiles in the Y there are and then how many cycles there are. And it will literally just animate your texture on the particle effect. You can get some really cool fire effects and smoke doing stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's basically it for the particle editor. Um, it's really easy to use. if you, you can mix a bunch of particle effects together and get some cool stuff going on. Uh, you just really need to know how to use it. Um, it's easy, but it's an easy thing to learn, uh, it's, but hard to master. It's one of those things. Because you can get some pretty cool stuff going on with this. Um, but yeah, that's it. So next week we'll be uh, enemies, and we'll be filling in the player in the enemy class that we've made today. And we will uh, also be using the animation editor so that... Uh, we can give the enemies some animations to kind of fly around the level and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, see you guys next week.